Gas exchange systems vary tremendously across animals, though they all share some fundamental characteristics. In a few animals, bulk flow of body fluids can be sufficient for adequate gas exchange across the surface of the body. Many aquatic annelid worms and animals of similar very small size and shape, some crustaceans and a few small marine mollusks can do that. Most larger animals, however, need to use some form of specialized gas exchange organ. The most common in aquatic organisms is gills. In all cases, they're finely branching extensions of the body for gas exchange. They may float freely in the water if they're external gills, or they may be internal with a pump to move the water. We'll focus on gills in fish. Here's the head of a fish showing the gill arches. These structures are the gill arches. And on each gill arch, the red portions here are gill filaments. And each arch has a pair of gill filaments at every location. If we took just one small portion here of two adjacent gill arches, that would be equivalent to these two gill arches. So here are the gill arches with stiffening some kind of bony structure or cartilage and then blood vessels, an artery and a vein in each one. Blood is going out and then back, out and then back. If we took just one portion, that's this little black box here, and blew it up. So now we're looking at just one portion of this flat structure here, the filament. On the filament are these structures that stick up, the lamellae. Water flows across those, carrying oxygen and picking up carbon dioxide. Blood flows in the opposite direction in a countercurrent exchange system that I'll talk about elsewhere. Over here, you're seeing the gill arches are down here at the base with the filaments coming out toward us. And you can vaguely tell there's multiple rows of them here. If we're looking at one gill arch and one lamella on that gill arch, there would be a blood vessel carrying deoxygenated blood and that would be coming out from the body. Back behind here, there would be another gill arch, another gill arch, sending blood through each one. And at the opposite end of the gill arch is a blood vessel that's got oxygenated blood. If we looked at the gill arch from the side, what we'd see is a layer of epithelial tissue with occasional nuclei, some thickened regions that support it, and this whole thin thing would have blood coming into it and running through the page here and out the other side. Blood is coming in, moving through, and as it moves through, it's picking up oxygen. Water, the water is coming in loaded with oxygen, saturated in other words, and by the time it leaves, it has transferred oxygen to the blood. 